Tonight, Star Trek's Nichelle Nichols shares the heartbreak of losing her brother in last month's mass suicide. Plus, a look at life inside Heaven's Gate from a former member of the cult and the co-founder's daughter and a prominent minister, all next on Larry King Live. Now, live in Los Angeles, here's Larry King. Good evening. In Portland, Oregon, is Aaron St. Pierre, a former member of Heaven's Gate. Aaron, by the way, uh, will have some interesting things to show us in a little while. Here in Los Angeles, Hank Hanegraaff. Hank is president of the Christian Research Institute, host of a radio show called The Bible Answer Man, heard in 100 markets in North America six days a week. And Terry Nettles, the daughter of Bonnie Nettles, who co-founded Heaven's Gate. Let's start with Terry. How did your mother, how did this happen? I think uh, it started out as a hobby with astrology and going to some of the uh, spiritual and what have you. And as time went on, she got really good at it and, and it was very believable, some of the stories that the spiritualists would tell you. And then when she met up with her, all these things started coming together. Did you know him well? Uh, not really well, but I, I knew him. He worked at the theater I used to work at. Your mother was divorced? Not at the time, not when they met. That would happen later. And w w were they a love relationship? Were they no, a not, not at all. Not at all? Not at all. Explain it. Well, it's, according to my mom, they, they had, they, she, you know, she kept using the term vibrations and what have you, but... Uh, like chemistry. Yeah. But not sexual chemistry. No, no. What did you make of it all as it progressed? Well, you know, I was busy with my own life, and I was 19 years old, so I got to, I didn't have to stay home or anything. But it kind of, it was kind of frustrating because I wanted... I want to be with my mom. I'm just tired of this guy taking her away from me. Did you did you like him, or you didn't know him that well to like him? No, I liked him. I, he was one of those kind of he guys. Seems he gentle. just liked him immediately. You know, he Obviously, he had charisma. Very much so. Your mom must have, too. I yeah. mean, they were co-leaders of this. Did she really found it? They found it together. It was through meditation and prayer and what have you that they said that they found out exactly what they were doing. Did they ever to. talk to you about leaving the planet? Uh, yeah, actually, they did a number of times. And uh, it wasn't like what they did now, but uh, she had told me that there was a UFO and the whole bit that was going to pick him up. But they were. But she never to... said suicide. Or anything. No, they said they were. They believed they were the two witnesses in Revelations chapter 11, verses 3 through 13, and that after three and a half days they'd be killed, and after three and a half days they'd be raised from the dead. Did you continue to talk to your mother right to the end? I got a letter from her about. I guess it was about. A year before she died was the last letter I got. And didn't talk to her in that time? No. That was not unusual for her to like? No, because we went through periods because she moved around a lot and I knew she didn't, you know, have time to call, so. We'll get to our other guests in just a moment. When you heard about what happened north of San Diego, did you know immediately? No, I didn't. Um, a friend of mine called me at work and started telling me, you're not going to believe what I'm seeing on TV. And she mentioned the term Father Doe and she mentioned the UFO and the, with the Hale-Bopp Comet. And then you knew. And then I went, oh, man. So I started making some phone calls, and I found out they'd show my mom's picture and, and Herb's picture. So I was... That's got to be the most... Dev was it a total shock? Oh, yeah. I'm, because you, you knew totally about UFOs, you knew about other things, but not suicide. No, no. Yeah. That, that was a totally different story. Aaron St. Pierre in Portland, uh, you knew Terry's mom, did you not? Yes, I did. What um, was she like? She was uh, very gentle, very quiet, uh, sweet. Um, she, uh, she was always with Bo. The two of them spent all of their time together and uh, she just seemed very calm and peaceful at all times. What attracted you to this group, Aaron? Um, the promise of uh, everlasting life. Uh, the hope for uh, a future that would be filled with, uh, with constant growth and constant knowledge. And other, uh, other religions, other concepts didn't hold that for you? They didn't. Uh, I think the thing that, that isolated this for me was the promise of staying alive. I was promised that I would never die, that uh, the, the process that we were to follow was to, uh, to make ourselves perfect so that we could enter our, our Heavenly Father's kingdom in the body that I have now. Why did you leave? I, at the, 
At the time um, that I left, we had had several meetings that Bo and Peep had spoken to us and told us that some of us weren't working hard enough, we weren't praying strong enough in, in order to uh, make our transformation. And because of that, we were preventing the, uh, the members of the next level from coming in and accepting any of us. So you were tossed out? I'm sorry? You were tossed out? No, sir. I, uh, I chose to leave in order to make, to make this available for everybody else. But they presented a situation to you to make it uncomfortable for you. Yeah, I did. I had to do. In a sense, it. they saved your life. Yes, they did. They did, because shortly after this, they they went into it looks like a compound kind of a mode, and and I probably would have never left at that point. Hank, what got you as president of the Christian Research Institute interested in this well, cult topic? One of the things, of course, that you have so often with people is they are being fed the skin of the truth stuffed with a lie. And oftentimes in cults, they are asked to give away their critical thinking faculties and yield their will to the will of a guru. Don't, and don't Christian faith ask you to do that? Not a guru, but it says, give us your faith. No, absolutely not, because there's a difference between blind faith and faith in evidence. This is faith in credulity. It's a blind leap into a dark chasm. It ended up in right. a tragic death. Historic Christianity is something altogether different. A, a Christian asks you to look at the evidence and then accept it or reject it based on what you find. All right, is it a thin line? Though? The definition of cult is a group together with a common belief, I guess. Well, there are a lot of different ways yeah. in which you can define cults, but, but you basically you get a lot of people who are galvanized together under the auspices of a charismatic leader and they're controlled in virtually every dimension of their lives. Therefore, you could be a non-religious cult. You could be a uh, psychological yeah, cult. Yeah, absolutely. They're, they're defined from a theological perspective, also from a sociological perspective. And again, they're galvanized together by a charismatic leader. It doesn't have to be yeah. a... If they're adults, we have a First Amendment. If I say, come with me, and you come with me, that ain't her business, is it? Yeah, absolutely. That's How then do you stop this? Well, the only way you can stop it is by prevention keep them from going into the cult in the first place. I mean, Terry called me a long time ago, discouraged and disillusioned. She was a prime candidate for a cult. Once someone goes in, they've subjugated their critical thinking faculties. To get them out is difficult because you have to then try to, in the reverse way, subjugate their critical thinking faculties. You don't believe that in grabbing and deprogramming? No, absolutely not. Why didn't you join, Terry? I don't know. It's, my mom kept telling me that if you join, you won't be with me, that... Uh, you'll be assigned to somebody else and you guys will travel around the countryside telling them about how to join the group and, and the message that we have. And Did that have any appeal to you? Well, I, it was, I really wanted to be with her, but uh, it did to a certain degree. And in November of 75, I had given all my things away to move in with her or to go with them. And, and then uh, what happened? Well, a couple months before that, I told her, I said, I, you need to call me in November. And I don't remember why we set that date. And I said, I don't want one of your followers to call me. I want you to call me. And because if you don't, I'm not going. Well, I was ready and I had given everything away and one of her followers called. So that's it. I don't want to go. And I was being a brat, but I'm glad I was. <laughs> uh, did you find, Aaron, another source of solace for yourself? Um, not since that time. I no? actually believed that they had left shortly after I came back to Oregon. I felt that they... The spacecraft must have come within days of my leaving. You felt they, the, and they left? Yes, I felt they had left, and so I have held on to the same belief basically until now. Yeah. And so, so everyone's death a week ago was just overwhelming to me. I had no idea. No. Yeah. We'll come right back with Aaron St. Pierre, with Hank uh, Hanegraaff and Terry Nettles. This is Larry King Live. Tomorrow night, Rod Steiger on Larry King Weekend. We're in Los Angeles, and we'll be right back. Before the mass suicide, each member of this cult gave a testimonial on videotape. The first one to appear was Marshall Applewhite, also known as Doe. We must tell you the quality of this videotape is poor. Here is Doe's take on suicide. Suicide is separating from the kingdom of God when the kingdom of God has reached out and offered life to you. That is suicide. So to us, it would be suicide to not leave. It is suicide to not leave. It is to take life.
to leave this body behind. It is to significantly take life. This is not life to us. This is like living in a civilization that is of history, that is uh, barbaric, that is primitive in comparison to the civilization of the level above human. We apologize, of course, for the quality of that. Hank, how do you reason with that? Well, it's it, 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 it's in itself barbaric. Here you have a but guy. It's his belief. Well, it's not. It, it, but it's a. It's based on blind credulity. He's telling people that there's a level above human. He's saying that in the uh, shroud of the hale bopp comet there is a UFO, and if you take your life, you can go to the level above human, and you could be a pioneer. And see, here's the problem. Once people's lives are conformed to predictable patterns through peer pressure, and you saw the people, they were dressed the same way, they sported the same kinds of haircuts, virtually anything is possible. You have mass suggestion that has impregnated a group. It can make black appear white, it can enshrine absurdity, it can obscure reality, and in the end it can cause a man to pitilessly cleave the skull of his brothers, or what you saw, someone can die with a purple shroud over their body. Was your mother a bright woman? She knew her astrology, I mean, she knew her concept, she was of this world, right? Right. She bought that. Not, not what they did, no. That was a totally different story. I mean, and granted, it was a cult, but it was nothing what they taught today. Yeah. It was 12 years later, I mean, after she died. Her f just lost She it. would not have bought this no concept way. at all. No way. Yeah, as a matter of fact, they have a progressive revelation. Before she died in 1985, they believed that you were going to be beamed up in the UFO with your body. After she, she died, you had a problem. Her body was here. Her spirit was on the UFO. So they changed their view to say that now you had to leave your vehicle or your earthly container right. so you go to level about How old was your mother at death? 57. Died of what? Of uh, melanoma cancer. Uh, did they try to do anything for her or did they just let her die? According to the people that, that told me about her, um, they said that it was too late to do anything. Do you believe, Aaron, that she would not have killed herself? I believe she would not have killed herself. The, the story was very specifically that we would leave in these bodies and uh, the, there's no way that she, she would have done that. Uh, when you see what we just saw on tape, your feeling is what? Um, I'm sorry, would you repeat that, please? When you see what we just saw, hear what we just heard, what goes through you? I, would you have bought that? No. I, I probably would have if I had continued with them, but yeah. I, in presently, no, it's, it's absurd. It, it's something that, there, that is, is absolutely, I, I couldn't understand it. I, couldn't, I wouldn't have been able to believe any of it. You, uh, I understand, have brought a flyer along that was handed out. Mm -hmm. One's handed out by Don't Will you show it to us? Sure. It's uh, basically, uh, ref it, it explains their philosophy uh, on uh, how we are to change from uh, uh, this type of body into a, a higher level body comparing to changing from a caterpillar into a butterfly by going into a period of of um, kind of a, well, our prayer time. Uh, we were using that to, to grow and change into new beings. They, end, they pass these out where, on street? No, we were using these in the meetings that we held. Uh, we would uh, hang, fl hang posters around town telling where we might have a meeting, and then at the meeting we handed out uh, flyers like this and, and some additional ones, which I don't have any longer. Hank, most cults don't kill themselves, right? And there may be many of them around. Maybe yeah. hundreds of cults all around the world, right? Yeah, most of them don't draw their theologies out to the logical conclusion of suicide, right. but you can do emotional damage, you can certainly do financial damage. Uh, in many ways, you cripple people. There are all kinds of people, even within evangelical Christian con congregations today, that are using repetitive physical motions to work themselves into an altered state of consciousness, and they're doing all kinds it's of like things. Like faith healers. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Now, you may, the cult is a bad word. It's become to mean a bad word. Could there be a nice cult? Well, I, I don't think so. I you think that no, because I think what you have is a cult is typically you take a historic Christian religion like Judaism or Islam or Christianity. A cult would be uh, an aberration of those. Groups.